Hi YouTube, I'm Iman, and welcome back to one of my auto repair videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to refill the coolant on a 2004-2009 to Toyota Prius. Now, you might be watching this video and, th and thinking, why might I need a video on how to refill the coolant? And while in theory it may sound simple, it's actually a very complicated system, the cooling system. This is a diagram of it, and in order for the coolant to get to all of these parts, it, there are some certain procedures that you have to follow when you're refilling the coolant. And I'm here today to show you how to do that. Now, uh, one thing uh, I just want to mention is that you, it's, it's recommended to use the Toyota SLC, uh, SLLC, which is the super long life coolant, uh, the genuine one, on a Toyota Prius. But in our case, we're just using a Valvoline Xerox uh, phosphated hybrid uh, organic acid technology. I mean, it's essentially the same, but if you're picky about that kind of stuff, uh, it's recommended to use the genuine brand. The Prius is a very complicated system in that you have to bleed or burp the air out of the car before you can drive it. So we're going to refill the coolant in the system by using the airlift. And you don't have to use the airlift, uh, you can just use a manual funnel. Uh, however, which is understandable because the airlift is really expensive, it's actually around $150. All it does actually is just speed up the time it takes to uh, refill the coolant. This takes about around five minutes to refill the coolant, but a manual funnel takes around one hour to two hours. All right, so the manual method is to take a funnel uh, like this one. This is like $3 at Walmart, uh, pretty big. You wanna unscrew this cap. It's a push and twist, and I think there is a place where it comes out. All right, there it is. And then you wanna take the funnel you want to stick it in there. So what you want to do now is you want to make sure that it's tight in there, that there's no gaps around. Uh, you can use, you can also use a funnel like this because this one's also tight. However, you don't want to use a funnel like this that has ridges around it because when you put it in, you're going to see that there's gaps and that it has wiggle room. And the reason why you don't want to make sure that you want to make sure it's tight is because when you put the coolant in, it goes in really slowly. Uh, it, it kind of stops you from putting any more too much at the same time. So when you're putting a funnel like this, you can just put a lot of uh, coolant and it won't overflow. So if you're doing the manual method, it's going to help out a lot if you uh, jack the car up and tilt it to the driver's side because if you look here, the coolant heat storage tank is on the driver's side, this, this big barrel right here. And the end goal of the manual method is to get as much coolant possible into the coolant heat storage tank. And by tilting the car, we're helping, the, uh, we're helping out with that by, uh, by allowing gravity to do its own work. When you're filling the coolant, you want to make sure that you close all the drain plugs. So there are, I think, three drain plugs. So the engine drain plug in the back, the radiator drain plug, and the drain plug down there. Uh, we only uh, unscrew the drain plug down there, so that's the only one that we have to close right now. So let me show you it on camera. All right, so this whole assembly up here is the coolant heat storage pump. And that's directly under the coolant heat storage tank. This yellow thing right here is the drain plug. And as you can see, it's already closed, so we don't have to worry about it. All right, so as I just showed you, it's pretty easy and less time consuming to use the airlift uh, system in order to, to fill your coolant. So we just did it just now. So I'm going to demonstrate what it looks like with the manual uh, method, which is using a funnel. As you can see, we have a jack supporting the car on one side, which is tilting it to the, towards the dri driver's side, where the uh, coolant storage tank is, the coolant heat storage tank. What we're going to do now is we're going to uh, fill the, well technically you should use a bigger funnel uh, so it's able to hold more coolant as it goes down, but for demonstration purposes we're going to use the smaller funnel. So what you're going to do is you're going to pour the coolant into it, and as you're pouring, the coolant's actually going to go down uh, a bit uh, gradually because of the pressure, and it's going to, it's going to uh, be so slow that as you're filling it, you might want to do it in phases so that you don't, uh, what's it called? Uh, go over the top? No. Uh, overfill. So just for demonstration purposes, you're going, to, you might want to hold this actually. You're going to fill it. And then when it gets to the top, you, what you want to do is you want to wait until it all goes down. So you can see that it's actually going down, but really slowly. Okay. Okay. Alright, so if we put in more. Yeah. 
we're gonna see that air bubbles are actually gonna appear. You, you also saw them appear in the last clip, but I think the system's already filled, but maybe it'll appear. So some air bubbles might appear, and that is an indication that there might be air bubbles in your system, or that air bubbles formed while you were putting the coolant in. Alright, so I'm my mind, and I just showed you how to uh, fill your coolant using conventional method, funnels, as well as the airless system. Now, you're not done yet. Uh, filling the coolant is just one step. You also have to bleed the system. Uh, it's also called burping or purging the system, because there still might be air bubbles in the system. Now, let me just tell you. Prius is notorious for being uh, difficult to get rid of the air bubbles in these cars, because there might be three hot spots where there might be air bubbles. So first off, the radiator, the coolant heat storage tank, and finally, the heater core. And that's uh, mainly because the heater core is uh, above the other two components. So uh, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to purge, uh, burp, or bleed your system. So right here. And we put this green tape just so I don't put it in the wrong hole. You can hear the pump is working. Now we can detect what the amperage is. Oh, so you can see right here that air bubbles have came, came, come out of the system because we jumped the pump. All right, you can see now that we, when we turn the engine on, you can see air bubbles are coming out from the funnel. And now at this stage, what we're gonna do is... So check that out, and I'm Ayman. Thanks for watching. Because like, comment, subscribe, look at other videos on Ayman Ayman, especially that purging video, and all the other videos on the Toyota Prius, because like I said in all the, all the uh, previous videos, we're doing a lot of videos on this Toyota Prius because there's a lot of things to get done. So I'll see you then. And for now, signing out. Peace.